everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Irene and today I'm going to show you several boho style DIY lanterns which you can use for outdoors. So let's go ahead and get started. All of today's projects are based on ready-made lanterns which I found in different stores, but uh, they are not exact dupes uh, and more of inspired by them. So the first item I'll be making is this bamboo lantern from Zara Home. To make it I'll use wooden skewers from Dollar Tree and a wooden plate which I have on hand. I'm drilling holes in the plate around the circumference to insert skewers in here. You will also need wooden hoops. I'm giving it a light sand to remove the sealer on the hoops and after that I'm applying wood glue on the hoops and tightening it well so that the hoop rings stick together. After the glue has dried well, I'm also drilling the hoop around the entire circumference. In total I've made 24 holes for the sticks. After that, I'm inserting the skewers into the hoop, placing the hoop approximately in the middle of each stick. By the way, these skewers are a little bigger than normal, here where I leave the are sold as plant supports. Now it's up to the plate, and I'm sticking the tips of the skewers into it. I've messed up some holes a lot, so the plate doesn't look very nice, but I don't have another one, so I'm going to hide them a little later. By the way, here you can also use a plywood circle or a round wooden mini sign or a round ornament from Dollar Tree, or even use, say, a plastic bucket cover and paint the lantern later. To make the skewers hold well in the plate, I'm gluing each stick into it using wood glue. You can also fix the tips of the skewers on the bottom with hot glue or epoxy glue to make it hold well. For the top of the lantern I'm making a ring out of thick wire using a bottle of a suitable diameter as a guide. I'll also need some wooden beads. I'm stringing the beads on the wire ring. I have 24 pieces according to the number of skewers and I'm connecting the ring, passing the tip of the wire into the holes of the already strung beads, so that the wire has an overlap on the part of the ring. I'm tightening the skewers on the top of the lantern using masking tape so that the upper edge of the lantern gets the diameter I need and so I'll be able to attach the wire ring with beads on the top. And I'm placing the ring and arranging the beads between the sticks. To make the ring hold in place I'm tying it in several places with a twine. And finally I'm wrapping the skewers and the wiring with a thin twine so that everything holds well. I'm also hot gluing the skewers to the ring and to the twine and wrapping each joint to hide the wire under the twine. And after this is done I'm removing the tape. I've decided to make the handle for this lantern out of the beads. I'm stringing smaller and larger beads on the cotton twine and then I'm tying this beaded handle to the top of the lantern. All that is left is to decorate the bottom, where the drill bit ran away several times and besides I started drilling the holes at the wrong angle. To hide this dismay I've made another string of beads and I'm placing the string where the sticks are attached to the base and I'm tying the twine. The last thing to do is to put an LED candle inside. And we're done! 
have already made lanterns in a similar style from bamboo skewers and decorated one of them with beads as well. I really like the bamboo sticks and beads combo and the beaded handle decorates the lanterns so nicely. As you can see it's quick and easy to make and you can give it any shape you like from a vertical to a pot bellied one and if you soak the sticks in boiling water you can bend them further and make a rounded lantern. The second lantern I've decided to recreate was this lovely woven rope and wood lantern from a colorful farmhouse. For making a base I'll use Dollar Tree wooden photo frames. I'm removing the glass holders and setting aside the glass and the backs. To assemble the base out of the frames I've cut four pieces of window trim equal to the height of the frames. First I'm attaching the trim pieces to the long sides of the two frames using wood glue. And after drying I'm attaching the other two frames to the trim pieces, assembling the base of the lantern. And I'm tightening it with masking tape till dry to hold well. Then I've started filling the sides of the lantern with a rope net. I had green paper twine 3mm thick on hand, so this is what I used. I pre-marked the base from above and from below, marking each half an inch to attach all the twine pieces evenly. So, first I'm attaching the twine diagonally, starting from the middle of a side. After a few rows the diagonal wraps to the other side and so I'm hot gluing these twine pieces right away on the first and on the second side. I filled the entire side with diagonal twine pieces and after that I changed the direction of the diagonals. On the next side I also attached the diagonal twine pieces from corner to corner in the middle but in the other direction. Here I was trying to make the pattern as seen on the original photo where half of the threads which were going say to the right go on top of the threads going to the left and the other half were below them. So next I tried to follow this pattern changing the angle of the threads in the middle of each side. But to be honest this is not particularly noticeable on the finished lantern, perhaps it would be better seen with a thicker rope. And with the one ahead you can just fill the entire lantern with threads going in one direction and then attach the threads going the other direction. I'm assembling a cover out of the pieces of a thin wooden plank. I've adjusted the size of the cover to fit the photo frames, so I don't know if it makes sense to give exact dimensions here, but it's quite simple. The length of each piece should be equal to the length of the upper side of the base minus the width of the plank. I'm arranging the planks like so in a square. Since the plank pieces are quite thin, I'm attaching a second smaller square made of the same plank on the inside of the bigger square, making it offset by about half an inch from the outer edges. So for this smaller square the length of a piece is an inch less than the plank part of the first square. And finally I'm attaching more plank pieces vertically onto the base of the cover. They will stand on the offset of the smaller square here. And I've measured these pieces sizes right in place. I'm making the bottom out of the same planks, just gluing them together. And 
and I'm attaching the legs to the bottom. Actually, they are cut from an old shovel handle. I've decided to stain all the parts of the lantern to match the green twine. I've mixed a color close to the twine shade and I'm thinning it with water to make the paint more liquid. And I'm painting all the wooden parts with this liquid paint. Due to the fact that there's a lot of water in the paint, it has turned out translucent, so I'm giving the wood the shade I need, but at the same time the wood texture is still visible, like you get when you stain something. So this way you get a kind of a homemade colored stain, and if I'm not mistaken, this technique is called glazing. I'm hot gluing the bottom to the base of the lantern and I've decided to add a handle to the top of the lantern, so I'm drilling two holes in the cover opposite each other. I'm making a wire ring on the bottle of a suitable size and I'm threading the tips of the wire into the pre-drilled holes in the cover. I'm bending the wire tips so that they do not pop out. And after that I'm wrapping the handle in a cotton thread. Next, I'm hot gluing the cover onto the lantern. And finally, I'm tinting the handle the same color as the rest of the lantern. This tube is quite different from the Inspo actually, but I really like my green lantern. By the way, I think such a lantern would look gorgeous in black. Just spray paint it at the very end of the assembly. And the third lantern for today is this lovely beaded lantern from Laurel Grove Shop. As a base for this lantern I'm using a wooden plate again. You can also use any wooden circle. And I'm using a large glass jar. I'm dividing the plate into six parts in order to arrange the lantern supports evenly. And I'm drilling the holes according to the marks using a drill bit size to fit the wire diameter which I'll use for the supports. I'm making a test support out of wire, shaping it as I like and then I'll draw a template on paper using the support. Then I'm cutting five more pieces of wire for supports and I'm bending them according to the template so that all the supports have the same shape. I have a fairly thick wire, it holds its shape well, but it can be hard to bend it by bare hands, so I'm helping myself with pliers. After all the supports are ready, I'm sticking them into the wooden base and bending the wire tips on the inside so that the supports hold well in place. I'll fix them with hot glue a bit later. And now I'll fill the supports. For this I'm using 14 mm wooden beads. They have a large hole and they fit wire supports perfectly. It turned out that the upper band tip, which I made according to the template, wouldn't allow me to put the beads on, so I had to unband it. And after all the beads were put on, I bend it back. My lantern is quite large and it took as much as 22 beads for each support. And I have to tell you, stringing the beads onto the supports is really satisfying.
After that, I'll make the top of the lantern. To do this, I'm using wooden rings. These are actually knitted back handle bases. I'll leave the link for some options you may use, but of course you can cut it out yourself. I'm dividing one of the rings into six parts and drilling the holes for wire supports. I'm placing the ring onto the supports and bending the wire tips. And now I'm fixing the supports on the bottom with hot glue so that nothing wiggles. Next I'm bending a wire ring the size of the wooden one. I've chosen the length of the wire to have about an inch overlap on the ring. And I'm stringing the beads on the wire ring. At the very end, I'm threading the second tip of the wire into the first two beads. It enters the hole with great difficulty and this fixes the ring tightly. Then I thought that I needed to sand off the duct edge of the wooden ring so that the color matches the whole lantern. At this point, I've decided that six supports are still not enough. I want more! So I'm taking out the jar and marking the places for installing additional supports between the existing ones. I'm drilling the holes both in the base and in the upper ring. And I'm installing wire supports. I've made them using the same template as for the first ones. Before installing the last support, I'm returning the jar back to place. And finally, I'm stringing the beads on these additional supports. And then I'm threading the tips of the supports into the upper ring and bending them in. Now I'll finish the top. I'm hot gluing the beaded ring onto the wooden ring. This will be the decoration and at the same time the beads hide the wire support tips. And I'm hot gluing the second wooden ring on top, as you remember I had two of them in the set. I've decided to stain the lantern in order to show off the wood texture better. I've used my favorite wooden stain in all color. It would probably be more convenient to stain all the parts of the lantern before assembly. It would be much easier, I think, but this idea occurred to me only after the lantern was ready. The original lantern is much lighter, so first I thought I'd leave it as it was, but after it was done I realized the beads look almost white and I wanted a more boho, more aged look, so I'm staining it only now. After the stain has dried, I'm sealing it with white wax. I'm trying to recreate these delicate highlights that the original lantern I've shown you has. Just a little bit left. In order to hide the ugly hot glue streaks and wire on the inside of the top, I'm hot gluing jutrope here. I'm also hot gluing the jar to the base so that it won't wiggle. And all that is left is to make a handle. I'm using the same jute rope that I decorated the top with. I'm making a loop through the top, tying the rope to it and then making several weaves to hide the knot and hot gluing the rope tip. To be honest, I absolutely love the result. This lantern is very large as I wanted it to be and I think it will look great on my patio. I really like how the bead supports look and I also think it turned out very similar to the original one from the photo. What do you think? Well, that's all project for today. Hope you like them. Please let me know which one was your favorite for today. Thanks for being here and hope to see you in my next video. Bye!